to lie to you. It's all kinds of things. I love how they wrote this. This is great. I love this. Oftentimes, bringing the gap, or bri bridging the gap between elected officials and the electorate are a vocal con contingent of active residents. A vocal contingent of active residents. Translation, the screamers outside the Home Depot. <laughs> the people making the, you know what, God bless those people, because if it wasn't for these people that I'm about to introduce, and the people who are mad, they're, they're the ones who bring the community to the things that need to be, and they do bridge a gap, and it's a very important one. So, to deliver their joint community remarks, I'd like to please welcome Sunland Tahanga's Abby Diamond, from Valley Glen, Dream Rides, and from Studio City, John Rock. Thank you, Christina. Christina does news, and um, I'm outspoken. Um, I'm really glad that the uh, two-minute buzzer isn't on today, and we have this pony podium instead. Um, Paul, we did it. <laughs> I want to say what an honor it is to be with the distinguished guests we have here today, community leaders and friends. Uh, it really is an honor to celebrate this victory for CD2 with you. It's a great day. When we work together, we are unstoppable. We all rolled up our sleeves to get our wonderful candidate elected, and um, I'm so glad that we can join together and uh, be a united group of communities for CD2. And while I haven't known Paul as long as some of his other supporters, I quickly came to see that Paul has everything it takes to represent our interests downtown. He is spirited and sincere, trustworthy and courageous. Most impressive is his ability to listen, that he really wants to hear what we, the people, have to say. He really wants to make a difference, and we believe that he will make a difference. Paul represented our interests even before he became council member. Years before he was elected, Paul proved his dedication to, provide, to preserving open space by supporting the community's effort to save the Verdugo Hills Golf Course. Our concerns are Paul's concerns. While campaigning, Paul addressed our needs by attending local meetings about flooding after the station fire. And just this past Friday, Paul was flying over Southern Tahunga in a Los Angeles Fire Department helicopter to assess the fire damage and the debris flow dangers that we, we face, real danger. Um, but one of the most endearing and neighborly things Paul did was to open a campaign office in the heart of Tahunga. For the first time in a long while, we felt included and that we mattered. And it was an incredibly smart move which pretty much nailed it for him to win the election. <laughs> Um, but wait, there's more. <laughs> now that he's actually our council member, uh, he, from day one, he hit the ground running. Like that. <laughs> She's just checking on She runs and then hits the ground. <laughs> have to find where I was again. Hit the ground running. Thank you. He did. He hit the ground running. He exercised um, a rarely used council move uh, to help us control density in our neighborhoods. Very impressive on his first day in office. 
really amazing uh, courage left. Leadership and courage. He then fulfilled the campaign promise. He did make a couple of promises to us uh, during the campaign. And he, uh, he fulfilled the campaign promise to us to save 10 precious oak trees on McGordy Street in Sunland. And um, by doing that, he's preserved the rural feel of the neighborhood that makes Sunland Tahanga so special and so unique. We know that we can count on Paul's commitment, commitment to preserving the character of all our neighborhoods. Paul is a family man, obviously. <laughs> it's his priority, it really is. He's told me that um, personally. We've had some personal conversations which have meant a lot to me to get to know Paul that way. He's our neighbor and our friend. He's the guy next door, and he's now our council member. Paul, I want to welcome you to the family, and we're so glad that you're representing us. Thank you.